Hey everyone, let's turn this HDR image into this gloomy dark shot. We're going to be using Photoshop for that and if you want to follow along you can find the raw file in the description of the video as always. So here we are in the camera raw editor first to do the basic raw adjustments. As I said earlier, this is an HDR image, which just means we do have a lot more dynamic range, fixing those highlights and the shadows as well. So the first thing I want to do is to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which just lessens the contrast a bit. Also, it makes those very dark shadows slightly brighter. Now let's expand the basic panel. I do want to balance the exposure and for that first let's take a look at the histogram. You can see it's actually not that bad. There is apparently no clipping going on. Still, I do want to bring down the exposure, making the overall shot slightly darker. And of course, I also want to bring down the highlights, which in turn just gives us more details in the sky. So now we can actually see some clouds up there. Then I want to bring up the shadows, making the darker parts a bit brighter. And I'm also going to raise the blacks for the same effect. Also raising the blacks kind of adds a nice soft touch to the image, which I like for this scene. So at this point, the image might look a bit flat. We can change that by playing around with the whites. So let's just bring them up slightly. That might be a bit too much, so I'm going to bring it down, but this looks pretty good. And finally, I do want to bring up the texture for some overall sharpness in the details. But at the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity quite a bit, introducing some more softness. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. And bringing down the dehaze will also make the image a bit brighter depending on how much you drop it. So just keep that in mind. And finally, the image is lacking some colors. So let's bring up the vibrance. Wonderful. Let me just collapse that thumbnail menu down there. So that's the image after the base adjustments. Compared to before, you can see the exposure is much better balanced. Although overall it might look a bit flat for now, we can change that by using some masking. So let's just do that. So I'm going into the masking menu. I guess I want to start with the sky. What I want to do is to make the top part darker while the bottom part just above the ocean will be quite bright. So I think I'm just going to try using a sky mask for that. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to make use of the subtract button and I'm going to use a radial gradient. And the reason for me to use radial gradient instead of a linear gradient is because of the shape right here, because it has a nice round edge, which just looks a bit more natural when applying this effect. So I'm making it nice and big, just like that. Looks pretty good to me. Maybe we can adjust the feather some more. Now in here, what I want to do is to simply bring down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit. And I will also bring up the contrast, which will help making the sky just look a bit more interesting. All right, looking good. Maybe I'm going to adjust the radial gradient, bringing it further down, but I'm quite happy with this for now. I think I'm going to just create another sky selection. This time I'm going to use a linear gradient for the subtracting and I'm going to go very far up. Just want to target the very top part of that sky. And in here again, I'm just bringing down the exposure to add some kind of very cool vignetting effect. Then next up, let's add a little bit of glow in the center. And of course for that, I'm using a radial gradient since the shape just nicely fits right there. I'm going to cover both sides of the cliffs. So we do get a nice light bloom effect. And with this one place, I'm going to bring up the whites to make the highlights brighter. And I'm also going to increase the blacks, which adds this very soft glow. That's looking really good. Now let's go down and bring down the clarity slightly. And for a stronger glow effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. Wonderful. Then I do want to enhance the glow some more. So let's go ahead and use another radial gradient. I'm going to make it a little bigger this time. But again, I'm making sure to overlap both sides of the cliffs. In here, first, I again want to bring up the blacks. And at the same time, I want to bring up the exposure. 
This might be a bit too much. I don't want to introduce too much overexposure, but I think this is looking quite good. All right, nice. At this point, I do have the feeling the top part is still a little too bright. So let me use another linear gradient targeting the very top part very roughly like this. And again, I'm just bringing down the exposure, adding some more darkness to this image. So I'm really happy with the top portion of the image. Now let's also work on the foreground. So in this case, I'm grabbing another radial gradient and I want to target this rock right there on the left side. In here, actually, let's bring up the feather, just like that. In here, I want to, I want to bring up the texture and I want to boost the clarity quite a lot just to make this rock formation a little more visible. Then I'm going to grab another radial gradient just for the waves in the foreground. Going to target mostly those white water waves. And again, I'm going to bring up the clarity. That looks much better. And then there's one more thing I want to do and that is to create another radial gradient just for a bit more glow. I'm going to make it very thin here. Make sure to bring up the feather all the way. And again, I'm using increased blacks, dropped clarity and dropped dehaze. And that's it. Here we have the image after the masking adjustments. Without the masks, with the masks. You can see we completely transformed the image, made it a lot darker. So at this point, let's go ahead and do a little bit of color grading. I'm starting in the color mixer. And let's target the hue first. I do want to bring down the yellow hue just a bit, introducing some orange tones to those grassy patches. Then I'm heading over into the saturation tab and I'm going to bring up orange and yellow and maybe even the blue tones and the aqua tones. That's looking really, really good. Now I'm doing a bit of split toning as well which means in this case, I want to target the shadows and the midtones. Let's start with the shadows. And of course we are working with a lot of blue, of blue color tones already. So I'm going to use a blue cold hue. Let's set it up first and I'm going to slightly increase the saturation. Then I'm going to head into the midtones and again, choose a cold blue hue and bring up the saturation. Perfect. Almost done with the raw adjustments. Now what I want to do next is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm bringing down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and I'm going to increase the amount of sharpening. All right, that's the image after the raw adjustments. Here's your original HDR file and the edited version. So now we can open it up in Photoshop and finish this image. So first off, I want to create some very heavy glow in the center. In this case, I'm adding a new layer and switch the blending mode to hard light. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B and I'm making sure the foreground color is set to white. And let's also bring down the brush opacity up here, just like that. And now let's bring down the brush size and I'm going to carefully paint in some more glow coming over the edges of the cliffs. I know this is very, very heavy, uh, but I personally just love this look. All right, beautiful. Then we might want to introduce some autumn glow. For that reason, I'm going to merge both those layers, selecting them and hitting Ctrl E. Then I'm duplicating this layer by hitting Ctrl J. Then let's go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And just with those settings, I'm hitting OK. Switch the blending mode of this layer to, let's go with lighter color and bring down the opacity. Of course, overall, this is way, way, way too much glow. So I'm going to add a black layer mask on top of this hot and glow layer by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the layer mask icon. Then I'm again grabbing the brush by pressing B. And I'm setting the foreground color to white and bring up the brush opacity. And as we use that white brush on that black layer mask, we are going to reveal the underlying autumn glow effect. 
So I'm going to brush over all those brighter spots, basically over everything where I want to have this glow effect. And that's mainly the sky, just like that, as you can see. Now, if you want, you can further tweak it by bringing down the opacity of that glow layer, but I think this looks pretty good so far. And at this point, I do want to apply a little bit of dodging. So let's create another new layer and switch the blending mode to overlay. For the dodging, I'm always using the TK panel plugin. This is a paid plugin, but there's a free version available as well with some less functions, but really all you need to have for the dodging thing. And what this plugin does is I can click on one of these buttons here and select either the darks or the lights or the midtones. In this case, I want to make the lights brighter. So I'm going to activate layer mask mode with our new layer selected and I'm going to hit lights too, since I want to dodge the lights. The TK panel will create a layer mask for us and we're going to use that new overlay layer with a white brush again. And let's bring down the brush opacity. Now I'm simply going to add some more brightness on a few areas of the image. Let's bring up the brush opacity, however. Okay, now if I deactivate this layer, you can see the difference. It's very subtle, but I think it looks so much better. Now we can use the TK panel for something else as well. For that, let me create a vibrance adjustment layer and I'm going to select the layer mask of this adjustment layer. Again, go into the TK panel plugin. This time I'm going into the color menu and I'm choosing yellow. What this does is we are basically selecting all those yellow tones up here in the grass, which I want to make more vibrant using that vibrance adjustment layer. So let's bring up the vibrance here, maybe saturation as well. And you can see this doesn't have as great of an effect as I'd like. So I'm going to click this button, which will basically select a bunch more of those yellow color tones. And now it's looking much better. I even think I want to use this to dodge the orange color some more. So again, I'm using a new layer and set the blending mode to overlay and pick the yellow color channel. I'm going to expand that layer mask by clicking this button. And then with a white brush, I'm simply going to paint in some more light. All right, that looks great. Finally, I do think I also want to burn a few areas. So again, new layer, overlay blending mode, but this time we want to target the shadows. So let's go through here real quick. Seems it doesn't work. I don't know why. Sometimes I have to push the composite button up there and then let's go through that darks panel. I think layer four is looking pretty good. So let's use that one. And of course, since we want to make things darker, I'm setting the foreground color to black and I'm also dropping the opacity quite a bit and just going to brush over a few things, making those darker and thus just adding more contrast. Also going to be burning the sky a bit here, but this looks really, really good. All right, perfect. And that's it for editing this image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.